Okay, hi guys. So, um, I'm using this wire right quick, or this uh, headphones from Apple to do my recording because I've managed to destroy my lavalier mic. Uh, somewhere there's a short. I, I did pull it a couple times pretty badly, so um, this is now garbage, unfortunately. That's, that sucks. It is what it is, right? It's cold out. It's uh, in the low 30s. It's snowing a little bit, so I've got the heater on. That's what that growl is you hear in the background. But I'm out here to get working again. Uh, still got the, the left uh, spar here, and looks like I'm going to be doing some work on tie-down bracket fabrication. And then hopefully, maybe towards the end of the day, it'll start looking like uh, a wing with some, some of the... Uh, ribs on it. I don't know. We'll see if I get that far. But for now, uh, back at it, excited, and lots of little stuff to do. So uh, I do have a new lavalier mic coming. It's Bluetooth, so you can't pull wires out of Bluetooth. It'll just clip on. Looking forward to getting that because this won't work long term. No. Anyways, off I go. So a lot of what's going on in this video is preparing the left spar to uh, add all the ribs and whatnot. But before I can do the ribs, I have to do more plates, nut plates rather, countersinking, and add the tie down, uh, tie down bar, which is uh, something that you're going to have to fabricate and install in there. So that's all that's this is basically the entire day. I really had hoped to do more and ultimately get, you know, some ribs on there so it starts looking like, you know, what, what I actually wanted to look, you know, a wing, etc. But, uh, no. <laughs> and the other thing is, is, uh, you know, we talk about mistakes and mistakes will be made and, yeah, made a mistake here today, that's for sure. All I can say is, you know, read the instructions multiple, multiple times before you... Uh, commit. And once you start cutting metal, you have committed, right? Even then, even though I do read the instructions a lot, I can still make mistakes. And right here, I get in there and I start looking at it and I'm like, you know what, wait a minute. And then I realize, oh no, that's the face of a man who has made a mistake. Well, remember how I said mistakes are going to happen. Uh, I probably just made the biggest mistake I've made in this entire build process so far, uh, empennage and wings included, and that is I just machine countersinked the wrong side of the spar. Um, whoops. Not a big deal, honestly. I mean, I'm just going to machine countersink the other side, and then when I put the rivets in here, I will probably use a slightly longer rivet so that it sits down in there correctly. I think, I think we're going to be okay. I will probably contact Vans and tell them what I did and see what they suggest, or just talk to people on the forums and see what they suggest. Either way, I still have to countersink the pieces, so I'm going to go forward, you know, move forward as if nothing was wrong. Um, all things considered, this is a really minor detail. Just a little bit of a countersink, whoops. I don't think it's going to be a big issue at all, honestly. So, but, you know, don't panic. It's okay. No big deal. Just uh, unfortunate. I got them backwards. I knew that I know. I knew I had to countersink one side and then countersink the other side based on this diagram, and I got them backwards. Uh, so, got to pay attention. And that's, uh, I, I, my, my attention just wavered so <sighs> okay no big deal gonna move on so here i continued on as if no mistake were made i i went and countersunk the other side the sides that were actually supposed to be countersunk and you know just moved on as if nothing bad had happened which was actually the best possible way forward right here uh on this side though the the cage is too wide you can't actually get in there uh so i ended up using the reamer and just it, it is effectively a countersink tool right if you just push hard and twist it will eventually sink you know countersink that hole uh here i'm going through and getting the various nut plates and rivets to put the nut plates on 
Uh, also, I've heard you guys uh, in some of the previous videos, you're asking for more close-up shots. Uh, and I can totally do that. In fact, uh, today's filming, which is not in the video, I did start doing more close-up shots and I will talk to that in a couple days when you see that video. For now, since this, this particular footage is four or five days old at this point, uh, it was the older format. So, uh, whoops, <laughs> we'll, we'll get you, we'll get you a little closer here soon. So I, I recognize that, yeah, you really can't see much. I mean, part of it is because, hey, once you've seen a rivet thrown, you've seen a rivet thrown. And that's a lot of what I'm doing here is I'm just putting rivets on and nut plates on. And you'll do it so much, and I've done it so much, it's like, okay, do they really want to see this over and over again? I mean, that's, once you've seen it once, you know how to do it. So, eh, I don't know. But I will uh, I will be better about it. And the new stuff is, is much better. Uh, one thing I did want to show here is towards the bottom, something I'm doing just due to the nature of where the the rivet is because it's so close to the spar itself. I'm actually using a bucking bar on the metal and then I'm using the rivet gun is actually pushing the bucking bar and then I have another bucking bar on the other side that's actually doing the work of the shop head, which uh, I did not capture well. And then here I'm using the squeezer to do the other nut plates that are close to uh, the edge. Every time I can use the squeezer, I'm absolutely going to use the squeezer because it's just, you know, uniformity and uh, the end results. Oh, there you can see right there I was using a bucking bar on a, you know, I was, I was using the rivet gun on the bucking bar with another bucking bar on the other side. Um, ultimately, though, I do talk to the mistake and I did make some phone calls, which I did not get on camera. So I talked to a buddy of mine about the mistake I made. Uh, I called him up and said, hey, here's what I've done. Is this going to be okay? And he said, it'll be fine in this area because... Because you're countersinking this thick piece of metal and I accidentally countersunk the wrong side of the other thick piece of metal, it's no big deal because there's enough material between those two pieces that the countersink actually didn't remove much. I've put the rivets in, you'd never know that I accidentally countersunk the wrong sides. He said if it was thinner metal, first of all, you probably wouldn't be countersinking, but you'd rather be dimpling it. But if it were thinner metal, it would be a problem because when you countersink both sides, you're gonna be removing a lot of excess metal. So in this case, everything seems okay. Um, in fact, it looks great. Uh, I think it'll be fine. So, shoot, right? One of those mistakes that could have potentially cost money or been an issue. In this case, it was nothing at all. So I lucked out. Uh, I just have to pay attention. It's a good lesson for all of us, right? Pay attention. You know, the whole measure twice, cut once thing. Yeah, measure ten times and read the instructions three or four times in between before you do anything. Um, Got to get your head in the game, right? So, anyways, going to go back to it, try to pay attention, not make any huge mistakes, and um, see if we can't make this thing look like a wing. No, nah, probably not going to look like a wing today. Uh, but here, so the rest of this footage is entirely about fabricating the tie-down. Uh, they send you this bar uh, and that you just have to cut, you know, measure, 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 cut, uh, and then if you remember from the empennage, uh, something that you would do is you would draw a line uh, along a certain measurement and then use that to see through the holes and then you line up on the holes and that's where you drill. Here I'm, uh, by the way, here I'm going and I'm looking for my tap. Uh, you have to tap the threads in the end of the bar and I had left my tap at home. So uh, I actually tap it later. Uh, I thought I thought I would just not do it. And I thought, you know what, I can do this. I know where it's gonna be. I can go ahead and mount it and I can tap it once it's mounted later. And that's in fact what I did. So, but here I'm going through and I'm getting all the measurements correct. And I measured multiple times, uh, you know, cause I, I had made that mistake earlier in the day and didn't wanna do that again, so. Uh, then the old drill press here, one of the few times I use it. I don't use my drill press very often, oddly. Uh, but uh, using the drill press to do the pilot hole, the one pilot hole, and then you actually Clico the one pilot hole to the spar itself. 
then line up those lines that you had drawn on the back of it, which are straight lines, flip the whole thing over, and here I'm, here I'm actually putting the lines on the back. I hadn't done that yet. But flip the whole thing over, and then once you have it flipped over, drill uh, on those lines. You line it up on those lines, and then you know it's centered, and you just drill, 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 and you're done. And it worked really well. Uh, now I'm going to speed a lot of this up uh, because my other battery here, or my other camera's battery, uh, I actually went over and checked it at one point, pushed the button to check it, and I think I accidentally hit the button to stop it. So uh, here in a sec, it'll just be the other view, not this one, but the other one only, and that's the one that we'll have through the rest of the rest of the thing here. But uh, I go through and I, I get it all mounted. Uh, there are brackets that I get put on there that you're not going to see because, again, the camera was off. Whoops. Um, see, I need a cameraman. Anyone want to volunteer to be my cameraman? That would make things easy. Uh, see here now it's sped up super fast because it was a lot of extra stuff there. But the, putting the brackets on, again, more nut plates on the back of that thing uh, and just lots of extra little stuff. I do go over and I spray paint it. That's what I just did there. I went, over, went ahead and uh, primed it because it is not an Alcad part. Uh, and then I'm using the squeezer there to put the various... Uh, rivets in that hold the nut plates on and then it's just about making sure we know exactly what we need to mount it to the uh, part itself which I'm doing there you can see the the spray painted piece there and now it's just a matter of drilling it out and getting it all mounted up and it worked really well uh, it was it was a good day it was a nice long day actually like I said in the beginning it was a little cold out uh, I think it was the coldest day so far this year honestly a little bit of I don't want to call it snow. It's like, you know, mist that, that looked snow-like that barely hit the ground before it was, you know, melted the water. But we had some of that going on. Uh, so anyways, I'll, uh, I'll let myself from the past wrap up. I've got a lot to show you. Can't wait till you see where I am today. It's actually starting to look like a wing. Hey guys, all right, so um, I'm going to call it a little early today. I've only been out here about four hours, but I'm just kind of done. It's a Sunday, so I want to wrap everything up, go spend some time with the family, remind them who I am and that I still exist. Uh, today, so I finished up 13-4 and page 13-5. 13-5 um, was all about putting this tie-down bar on and doing all the various riveting and shaping and fabrication on it. Plus, you've got these these uh, bell crank um, brackets on the back that also are very important. So those are there now too. And uh, that's it. That's all I've done. So section 14 begins the process of actually adding ribs. So we're finally to a point where we're going to start making this look like something that actually is a wing. Um, very excited about that. That's going to be cool. Going to do that next week. Um, so, yeah. Uh, all's good. Going to clean up the shop now and then head on out of here. Thanks for watching.